Oh boy, folks. We're here. We're doing it. It's another episode of The Josh Potter Show. I'm Josh Potter. I want to thank everybody who came to Bakersfield, California this past Saturday night. Hell of a time. So many roaches crawling about. Someone brought me a Red Bull can. This isn't the very one, but it looked just like this. So thank you. Uh, Others, we took pictures. We signed things. Had a great time. And I want to do it again coming up here in Chandler, Arizona, right outside Phoenix, the brand new Mic Drop Comedy Club, May 5th and 6th. I will be there. So I hope you come visit me and uh, you get tickets. We're doing four freaking shows. And guess what? Chase O'Donnell is coming with me as well. So that's going to be fun. Beyond that, I'm going to be in Raleigh with Annie. And we got plenty of dates coming up here. So please to be buying tickets on my Instagram at Josh underscore Potter or on Twitter at J underscore Potter. And what else? Oh, Josh Potter show at gmail.com. Send in stuff the way Griff Parker sends in these instrumentals. People have emails. People have stories. Many Roach reporters out there. And today, we have a very special guest. It's Jane Wilde, folks. I keep thinking they're going to clap. <laughs> Thank you so much. We do much. have enough people here to clap these days, though. That's good. I like it. It sounds raucous. But welcome to the program. Been Thank- wanting to have you on for a while. Thank you so much for having me. I've been wanting to come on and have a nice little chat. So I'm excited. Now, uh, sorry, I'm turning the music up the wrong way. Yep. Now you see we're only a minute or so in, a couple minute and a half or so into the program. We have to wait till about 10 minutes to discuss some places people might know you from. I see. But, you know, I just dance around it a little bit here in the early portions. Yeah. Of course, a star of stage and screen. <laughs> yeah, and that's completely fine because I also like to talk about other things. Of course, and you're, I think you're, you're by the way, I've listened to you on other podcasts. You're hilarious. So oh, I was so thank very you. excited to have you here. Yeah, and you're funny and thoughtful. Thank you. And also, by the way, it's fun to have you here because yes. I, I don't know if this <laughs> counts against the YouTube, uh, Well, the smut, whatever they deem inappropriate (laughs) or whatever. But this is old school smut, baby, because Mm -hmm. your boy here in the April edition of Hustler magazine. Are you impressed? Huge honor. We're like fellow sex workers. Yeah. And honestly, (laughs) it's huge to be in Hustler. And and we were just mentioning this before the episode started that it's kind of a big deal to be in a print magazine nowadays because they don't really make them anymore, especially an adult. It's like all online. So in print is just super rad and like a cool souvenir it's crazy yeah it's nice to hold it yeah. it's, it's like as a little boy we used to keep these under uh not little boy but you know teenage boy <laughs> yes we'd keep these <laughs> under like a dumpster and then all like when are you going to the dumpster oh four o'clock i'll make sure to come at six then you know or what have you <laughs> right you guys know did you do that you fellows oh, yeah. in the okay oh, yeah. see everyone did it we all it, for some reason there's just an innate instinct in a teenage boy to be like We'll put it by the dumpster or in the woods. That was the other one. The woods. I totally. I was going to say in the woods was, was uh, yeah. oh, you guys didn't, uh, you guys had woods. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Into the woods. Yeah. I mean, I kind of not to get too, you know, into that topic already. No, like you please. Just said, but um, I kind of wish that I was like alive in those times when yeah. it was just <laughs> yeah, magazines and stuff because it would it would have been so much easier to like be successful and famous like you just have to oh, pose and not you know do the whole shebang i say that about stand-up too because i hate this whole like like i don't have a tiktok oh me neither mr clavicles runs the uh, josh potter show tiktok account out yeah. there and uh shout out mr clavicles but I feel like I'm missing the boat on something. It's not that I feel like FOMO or anything like that, but yeah. I'm like, remember when I could just do stand up? Yeah. Even this part, I'm like, I miss radio to a lot of degrees. Yeah. I miss it every now and then. And I'm like, I miss the live action part of it. Now it's like we're doing podcasts, which is cool. Yeah. But I wish it was what the way I started my career. I wish I could have just kept it going that way. To a degree, more successful, obviously. But yeah, no, that's uh, interesting. So you never, obviously, never. What the hell? Ooh. Annie Letterman is calling me. Should we oh, put her on speakerphone? Love her. Hi, Annie. You're on my podcast. Hi, <laughs> uh, I just picked up because I'm gonna put your put the gun to your head. You gonna do my podcast next week? Uh, no, Josh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I literally have to do 50 Trash Tuesdays, 100 Annie Woods. 
I well, I texted you. We'll get it. I thought I would be like, yeah, of course. That's I, th- I thought that's what you were responding <laughs> to my text. Joke. Obviously, I would, but I literally think I have like two podcasts today next week. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll get her someday, I'm folks. Live. I'm glad this is live. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, this is the mean truth about podcasting, you guys. Okay. All we do is talk. This voice, this damaged voice, this is not cigarettes. This is from podcasting, okay? I sound like an 87-year-old chain smoker because all I do is talk. We know. We know. (laughs) But come see us in Raleigh, Raleigh Improv, right? Uh, May 9th and 10th. All right. Thank you for calling. I got to go. Maybe us. I love you. All right. I love you, too. She's so funny. She's my best friend, but... (laughs) <laughs> Golly, sometimes I just go, please. <laughs> no. Yeah, she's like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> she's been on here twice, yeah. and she'll do it again, but it's tough to trap her into yeah. a time. <laughs> she's very busy. Busy lady. But we were talking about the olden times of smut, and uh, what was the earliest thing that, like, the earliest porn you consumed? Because I remember I was from this yeah. to dial-up internet to whatever the hell we're doing now where I can just be like, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, porn. Yeah, you know? well, I was born in the late 90s and unfortunately I was watching online porn. Should I not say the P word yet? No, we can say it. Okay, far enough fuck in. it. Yeah, you're fine. Good. Thank you, Rob. We got the green light. We're free. Um, no, I started watching it when I was definitely way too young. Um, sure. Because also like, it's one thing to look at images of nude bodies. Everyone has a body, but to actually see people um, fucking and it's like hardcore, nasty shit. Like I was watching, you know, gangbang stuff and wow, yeah. So I never got to see like the golden days of of pornography. Yeah, that's true. Because I remember the first VHS we ever came across. We like, of course, we were a bunch of us, and we popped it in and watched it all together. <laughs> None of us jerked off though. We just watched it, and yeah. it was, but because it was very like soft core still. You know, yeah. you it wasn't a lot of insertion. It was a lot of like you know. And that used to be enough. Yeah. Now it's like if you're not inserting five different things into every <laughs> hole at once, it's not hot. They can't. They can't jerk we're off. We're all to broken. It. It's all. We've yeah. all been broken. I'm broken too. But, <laughs> and it sucks because it's definitely just like a sign of the times. And I think sure. if I was just born, you know, well. Everything that's happened in my life that led me to get in the industry, if I was born 10 years earlier, maybe it would have happened that way, maybe not. But if I did get into porn 10 years earlier, I think it would have just been so much more fun and less like work and more just having fun. Because yeah. Do you think ever, do you ever think maybe more like glamorous as yes. a word as that is? Glamorous because I don't know, it used to be girls were just huge stars and it was actually it sounds dumb to people that aren't in this industry but you know for us it's like kind of a big deal no, to makes sense. get recognition or to feel like you know the most popular or the most recognized in the industry um where nowadays there's every girl has an only fans and yeah that's <laughs> the thing it's the same thing with like almost comedy it's like now it's like people that are blowing up on tiktok yeah. or whatever or it's like Oh, they're selling out a theater. You're like, whoa. Right, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and it's, But are they even funny in like a stand-up comedy Well, that's why I don't get way. upset about it because oftentimes, and there are a few that break through and have the chops and have been doing it, you know, mm-hmm. beside the fact that they're on blowing up on TikTok. But there are a lot of them. People on Vine, this happened to all yeah. of them, where they end up getting, you know, all the bookings and can do the gigs. But then when they have to do them, they don't have an hour. Right, so, they don't have material. Yeah, and then no one wants to come back to see them. Yeah, because it's like, you know, a TikTok can be five seconds long and get five million views. Right. But a stand-up set that's like 10 minutes might not get as many views, but it's, I don't know, I guess it really just comes down to the art of it. And that's why I don't get too broken up about the TikTok shit either. Yeah, because it seems fleeting. It is fleeting and and it's, you know, there's so many platforms that that come and go. And I think that uh, the strategy nowadays, everybody's like, if you want your OnlyFans to blow up and and get super popular, you need to go viral on TikTok and and thirst trap. And I'm just like, (laughs) I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to be myself and I don't want to have to. Try, like try to be sexy. Right. There's if a that certain. Makes sense. I get what you're saying. There's a certain threshold of 
this audience is big enough for now and mm-hmm. it will grow organically. Yeah. And uh, I don't need to like go out and chase it. Yeah. Because right? also the TikTok stuff, it's like, it's really never ending. Like they're never satisfied. You know, right. you can have a video that gets a million views and be so excited and so happy. And then the next day it's like, Okay, where's more content? Yeah, it's yeah. It's just like uh, the internet now I'm is still just, scrolling. Yeah, it's a never ending <laughs> like content taking machine. And it's just, it's very um, soul crushing for people that actually enjoy what they do because sure. it kind of takes the fun out of it. It's very corporate and very like you see all the brands now, they hire these like savvy little millennial <laughs> social media TikTok <laughs> managers and they're like, oh, we need to do this dance with this song. And you have, plastic surgeons like fucking doing tiktok dances oh my like, god so they so can funny. sell bbls and lipos and, <laughs> i like, saw that just be good at your job i saw somebody get in trouble because they were on tiktok recently where they yeah. were like i don't know they were doing surgeries <laughs> on people so they're like so now i incision here and it's like that's someone's face maybe they don't want people to know right but uh yeah it's a wild world this isn't my first time in a magazine by the way mm-hmm. what was your first Well, (laughs) back in 2012, they did a magazine on Time Magazine, and this was all like a controversial thing. This was like in 2012, they were having a hard time selling print ads and print, uh, you know, magazines and stuff like that still. So it was kind of dying. So they did something shocking. They had to resort to that. They had to resort. Nowadays, people would be like, this is is grooming. This is pedophilia or whatever. But it kind of, I mean... It's really strange, and yeah. it kind of flies into the uh, whole, like, faux incest. Well, this is 100% incest, although it is for, like, breastfeeding purposes. But yeah. Are you mom enough to breastfeed uh, your your teenager? I mean, I don't know what the question is. I just, there, I don't, regardless of how old the kid is, you can clearly tell he's too old to breastfeed. And I like how they put him on the stool as if he yeah, wasn't tall enough to really just get up there if he wants They're it. trying to make, their, they know exactly what they're doing with this cover shoot. And I mean, talking about it like it's now, this was 11 years ago. 11 years ago. They knew exactly what they were trying to do here. And look, I'm not on the grooming train nowadays. Like sure, nor pedophiles, am I. But this is a little much yeah this and is kind of that though <laughs> you kind of go i see what they're it's one of those things where it's like you know these 9 11 people say stuff and then you're like well you know yeah kind of, <laughs> you like go, i well, heard about that right? what was that documentary like the f- about the the extra building or something oh sure no of course it's there's like, little things where you go like well. yeah it's like <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not that's... impossible it's definitely <laughs> yeah, plausible yeah. But exactly yeah so i don't so know so when this came out it was all it was the talk <laughs> of the town you know everyone with the water coolers were a buzz and it mm-hmm. was uh, it was viral i mean i want to say twitter existed in 2000 i think it i've did. had 2000 twitter since 2009 yeah. So I definitely think it was like trending at the time, whatever the hell that was. <laughs> there wasn't really Instagram, so I don't know if I put it on there. But um, we did an ad for the radio station where uh, we we just uh, mocked one up mm. where I am in it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think we found like a pretty accurate woman. Who's that lady? She was a local uh, dancer. She's hot. Yeah, for sure. She, she looks came short. In, her legs and it was very short. awkward to have her like come in and be like, all right, I'm going to put my mouth on here now. I tried to like do it fake, but it's tough because. You're just kind of pressed up against it. Yeah, I wasn't sucking. No suckling. What if I really got into it? I'm like, no, it's just for the shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we made it, a little ad. This is professional. Here. It's all it's all pro here. Yeah, look at my clothes though. I was real 2012. <laughs> Still had hair. <laughs> Young Radio Josh That's trying funny. to get out there and go viral myself. It did go. It did did well on Facebook back then. I do yeah. remember that. But do, would you say now uh, that people in your industry are closer to comedians or athletes? Oh, I guess it depends on what you focus on. Um, True. I don't really think that... It's like a combination of the two. I guess, I mean, I've always thought that there was like a good amount of similarities in porn and comedy because you're kind of just putting yourself out there Mm -hmm. with, you know, your own original stuff, whether it be your your original written comedy or your body and your performance and you're kind of just being super vulnerable and like hoping 
that people like it. It's true. And like the real you. Um, yeah, that's that's the way I would definitely compare that. So that is that. But then with athletes, it's like it really depends on what type of stuff you're doing. Sure, you mean in the physical sense. Yes, physically. Like, you know, and there's different levels of athletes. Like a high school athlete is not comparable <laughs> true, to yeah. a professional. Just like, a, in my opinion, someone that is like filming amateur stuff at home with their partner is not comparable to a uh, gangbang with multiple insertions and doubles and all the, <laughs> yeah. the crate squirting like it's just different levels of athleticism but yeah i think they're both it's like a venn diagram sure and porn i guess would kind of be in the goes middle. into the middle of it and yeah. also the age factor because i feel yes. like people like start very young yeah. and then by like t- 26 are like my body's shot Right. And they're like, to get me off the field. Or you know what just, I mean? And yeah, then there's a few Vinny Testaverdes who are like, it's like, man, they've been going for 25 years. Forever. You know? It's crazy. And it's impressive. And I think, yeah, it definitely depends on, it's a special type of person, like a, you know, an Adriana Chechik type that can go so hard for so long. And he, she's even done. It's like, it's it's not sustainable, but it is fun. Yeah, yeah. It is exciting. and Just uh, like professional sports. Yeah, and rewarding yeah. because that's how you get the devoted, loving fan bases for years to come is by doing the memorable shit. At Do least you, it used to be. Nowadays, I feel anyone can sure. just make a TikTok and be memorable. Do you pick know. and choose your battles when it comes to like physical uh, exertion because you're like, I got to... It's it's like I just <laughs> we should might as well just play the sports theme because I'm making so many comparisons to the sports. Yeah, I I love it. Beep, 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 it's the sports time. Beep, 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 love it. We have other sports beep, topics. Beep, beep, too. I like beep, sports. Beep, beep, Hell yeah. Beep, 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 beep. I like some sports. Which ones? I like um, MMA. See this, I I <laughs> do like it, and I respect it, and all that, and I've been to the events, but it's mm-hmm. tough. I don't know the people. They yeah. all have four. It's tough. It's not marketed to me properly. Where yeah. I like team sports too. So like when it's an individual, I I lose something in that. I'm the opposite. As weird as that sounds. Because for me, it's like I would rather. And I was like that at first. Like I started watching UFC probably like a year ago. And I didn't know anybody at first. I just picked a pay-per-view, bought it. And kind of did a little research on who was fighting beforehand. And, you know, you just start taking a notice of people based on their performance, like every month or whatever. With sp- with team sports, it's like, I don't want to be a fan of a franchise. Because I used to be like <laughs> a, ra- weird. a Rangers fan because, you know, my whole family grew up. Um, as Rangers fans, so I Texas would re- Rangers or New no, York? No, New York Rangers. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm from New York. So. Hockey fan. That's yes, cool. hockey. Um, so I would always root for them. And then in 2014, they had an incredible run, and they lost the finals, mm-hmm. but they were in the finals. And I knew all the players. It was so cool. Now it's like almost a decade later. I don't know a single fucking player. It's like, they're how am I going to root for them? This is the first year they they're are, good again yeah. in a while. But I And I've experienced this with my sports franchises. And it's because, again, I just grew up in the city. I'm a Buffalo Sabres fan. Yeah. And for they haven't made the playoffs in 12 years. <laughs> and since I've been doing comedy, yeah. they've made the playoffs like twice. And uh, it's... I was I hated them for like a decade. Mm-hmm. There was like eight years there where I hated them. The Jack Eichel times. I didn't like the players. I was mad at the owner. Yeah. But then they like won me back. It's almost like you have to win back my loyalty. It's it is it is something a lesson in life. You can't get like brand loyal, but I find yeah. myself doing it. I don't know what it is, but that makes complete sense. Yeah, it's like I'll I'll watch someone and I don't know, these men and women they have so much heart and mm. i mean talk about athleticism like sure do you it, do you do live streams during them sometimes right or like re- I, or reaction stuff or i've something? been you know i started streaming i haven't streamed in like two months or mm. something i kind of burned myself out with it a little my thing is i get that i'm a free spirit and i like to try a lot of different things but i have a hard time committing to anything <laughs> unless i'm really passionate about it like well, and obviously if it's my job sure in the industry i just show up to work but um activities and like hobbies and stuff i have a tough time i think i have adhd i, I well i have an email here that we'll get to that i think okay. i think i have something 
we're learning. We're learning about ourselves <laughs> yeah. the last couple of weeks. But uh, I brought up the, I wanted to get into the sports and compare one more thing. Do you ever yeah. like reserve your body or like pass something up because about the longevity? Because Josh Allen was just talking recently about how he can't run around as much as he used to. He's getting older and he has to like learn how to play a little more conservative so that he can lengthen his career. Mm-hmm. Is there like ever a time where you're like, that gangbang just I can see it taking a couple of months off and I'm going to I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah, well, actually, well, I haven't done a gangbang sure. yet. Or I just used it as an example. Yes, yeah. but I have done some crazy Extremes. stuff, extreme stuff on my body, pushing my body to the limit, and I um, started doing films when I was 19. So at that time, I was like, every 19 year old's like, woo! <laughs> yeah. um, and I just wanted to fuck and party and have fun. So this industry is the perfect place for that. And then once I realized that um, doing anal and DPs and stuff, the more extreme stuff makes you more popular, you get booked more often. I was like, and it was easy for my, bo- at the time it was easy for me. So I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> um, was doing them all the time. And I kind of was known for that. And then the pandemic happened. And then kind of ever since then, in the last few years, I still do them, but I've been noticing that it, it does take a lot out of me more. I can't do them like as often anymore. And also, yeah, it's not even about like career longevity, but sometimes I'm like, I want to have like a personal life as well. <laughs> yeah, and for sure. I kind of didn't used to care about that as much because I was like, well, I'm getting fucked at work, but it's totally not the same at no, all. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It's very much um, acting and performance. I still enjoy it, but like it's more consciously, you know, worrying about how you look, how you are positioned all this stuff and if i'm like oh i'm hanging out with this guy i like on sunday and it's friday i'm not gonna i don't want to do like a dp crazy scene on a friday when i want to see someone on a sunday because it's just yeah the recovery does take like a couple days sometimes and yeah i'm starting to prioritize like my own happiness yeah you don't want to you don't want to be like saquon barkley and just like two years in you're injury prone no, you know what I'm saying? God, and I know people in <laughs> yeah. the porn industry that have dealt with that. I had a friend, we got in at the same time, and she was another um, crazy anal girl like me. And right around, like, maybe a year in, she got a horrific anal injury where Damn. it was torn. And she, is, uh, she was such a little slut that she couldn't <laughs> stop doing anal. And she wasn't letting the injury heal. So it ended up lasting for like multiple years. Oh, no. Yeah. And that hindered her career a lot. Um, so God, that it, is like a football player who's just like, yeah. like, stop taking hits. And he's like, I can't stop. Yeah, literally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scramble every time. Lamar Jackson, throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's so wild. Yeah. Do you like baseball? Uh, not really. It's so boring. Well, this I'm going to change your mind. I'm changing the minds of America out there. <laughs> One gentleman who I hope to... He's become a dream guest of mine mm-hmm. is Alex Verdugo of the Red Sox. I see. Because he's part of this new... Uh, like. Well, there's always been these guys, I feel like, but I'm learning more about them. And I think with social media, we're actually getting to see the personalities of these people a little, a little bit more. But he's mm-hmm. kind of like uh, unpolished. Where I think a lot of baseball players, you know, they're stuffy. They're kind of boring. Yeah. A little. Uh, it's a classier sport. Yeah. Well, I, that's the thing. It doesn't have to be. And I think Alex Verdugo shows what the potential could be. Here. Okay. Let's see it. In time to really evaluate that play again. Please be fucking fair. Oh, my bad. But please be fair, man. I was like. I just didn't want to pull one and, and fucking, uh, God dang, I didn't want to. <laughs> We're live, Alex. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't want he to. Knew he, was live. Over, you know, so I- he knew he was live. He knew he was live the whole time. He still couldn't help but say fuck every other word. Which, I love it, God though. bless it. That's my favorite. That's my vibe. I'm kind of like that. And, you know, sometimes it's a little embarrassing because I'm like, it, it just comes out. It's like a little tourette scene. Sure. But, I have uh, the <laughs> ability to, I could convey anything. I could describe one of your films to a grandmother using completely clean language i've developed that that, like filter ability wow but i don't want to i i want to be watching tv and see unfiltered people do you know what i mean when i'm an audience member i don't maybe the broadcasters yeah the broadcasters i get can't swear but like when you're a player say fuck 
I love when they uh, they miss. Mm-hmm. You know, they strike out and they go fuck, and you can hear it yeah. through the whole stadium and on the broadcast. That's my favorite thing yeah. in the whole world. I actually started keeping a little folder in my phone of compilations. Of yeah, those. I just don't get why sports needs to be sanitized. Like it's right. very, it's very. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like animalistic. Yeah, in a it's way. supposed to be raw and gritty yeah. and fun. And well, it's tough. you're a Rangers fan, right? We I, have I guess. A, we have a clip of the Devils Rangers that are playing each other right now. Right now. And uh, it's been a hell of a series, and yeah. the Devils kind of dropping the ball a little bit. Oh yeah. But uh, I don't even. What did I put in here? This is of. Oh, this is the fans. Okay, so. What's going on here? I thought this was a video, but do remind me because I definitely forgot. It's the fans are trashing each other. Mm -hmm. So you don't know any of these players. That's unfortunate because. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't. Ever since like Henrik Lundqvist retired, I don't know anyone. Well, Patrick Kane is like an older player. He used to play for the Chicago Blackhawks. He just joined the Rangers. Do they still have Chris Kreider? I do. Yes, they do. Okay, he's captain, right? Yes. That's all I know. Okay, cool. He was there at that playoff run nine years ago. Good for him. So in this, though, and do you have a printout for me so I can read it, or are you just going to read it for me? Oh, I can just read it for you. Okay, because oh. the fans are trashing each other. New Jersey, did you hate the New Jersey Devils as a child when you were a fan? Yeah, every, every tri-state area team. Pretty much being a Rangers fan is just like being surrounded by – every state that hates you of course all the time and, and honestly any new york sport and not to be that person but i really think that they're jealous being well, from new york is special and not everyone can, can i am also that. from new york yeah not the city it, it, Western it still new york, counts the state of new york it doesn't count i'm eight hours away in a okay. drive so we're i we was trying to make <laughs> you feel better no but that's all right. okay thank you i don't <laughs> see that's the thing we always go like we don't want to be new york but we always say about the football teams the Buffalo Bills are the mm-hmm. only football team in New York State. Really? Because the other teams play in New Jersey. Yeah, okay, the stadium. <laughs> I always grew up yeah, and people okay, were the like, stadium. they were like the New Jersey Giants. Like, yep. So clever, <laughs> so innovative because <laughs> their stadiums. In. Well, so, the, yeah, no, that's it's just a little, we tried it. We're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's your Of dose. course we can't affect any elections in yeah. the whole <laughs> state, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's been like a lot of, uh, I don't know what to call it here. Shit talking amongst the fans. What does this say, Carson? Mm-hmm. Read it, and then it'll re- jog my memory on the rest um, of yeah. the context. This one just says, "Okay, that fan base has been terrible enough that I'm coming forward with my embarrassing story about a player." Now this is about Jack. I believe the captain of the New Jersey Devils is Jack Hughes. So she's a Rangers fan talking about the yes. Devils. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and just says in college, my friend hooked up with a certain Devils captain, and apparently he lasted five minutes and then cried after. Cried after. But. <sighs> He does clarify it's just a joke tweet. Oh, it's not real? Yeah. Well, I thought it was but here's the thing. Joke, what was but... the point? Well, here's the thing. I thought everything online was real. I know, me too. I have been getting duped a lot lately, and it's because I opened my heart <laughs> recently and was hurt. So now I feel like <laughs> the internet's doing the same thing. But uh, what this did, though, was create a deluge of people like confirming Ugh. other things about the players. And it brought up, again, a Patrick Kane incident. Uh, and so he's getting thrown under the bus because he had some allegations. Oh, God. But it's really just, uh, I mean, football or hockey players are wrought with, I mean, it's the fact that someone was like, he cried after and didn't last long. I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense for like one of these young hockey players. Yeah, you know? but also like, I mean, is that the most flattering depiction? No. No, but it, is it but terrible? It's, yeah. it's common. I, if it were me and it were true, <laughs> I would be like... Yeah, sorry, I was uh, I was emotional. Like, I mean, sure, he's going to get chirped in the locker room. Forever, sorry, I was but... going through something. My mom died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I cried. I would put that person on blast for being a, a loser. I'd be like, oh, I guess I should be just like a, you know, yeah, a, I mean, a rapist or something terrible. It's, yeah. It's not even her story. She's like, my, my friend. friend. I'm like, this isn't even your, you're just grasping for something to be relevant and you're just not. Was there anything in the replies below that were also salacious? <laughs> Salacious. Um, not really. Just mainly people calling him out, like, "Oh, you're just mad because your team lost," or like, "You're making oh, making glad. up mm-hmm. the Devils jokes. fans came to yeah. the aid yeah. of the." Uh, okay, that's good. It's just people get so. Na- that's another thing with team sports is people just get so nasty. I love it. <laughs> it's just so nasty, and then there's nobody to mad. like speak I, up and say stop that. I was a. I didn't like the way Bengals fans and Bills fans after this last playoff 
situation went down, they really turned on each other after unifying after the Damar Hamlin thing. And I definitely didn't. Is that like when it. he got really badly yes. injured? Yes. Everybody was unified and we're all like, hey, the Bengals fan base, they're pretty great. And yeah. the Bill, they were like, Bills fans, we got your back or whatever. And then he we lived. played in the playoffs and he lived and he came to the game and they're like, we don't even know if he really died Yeah. on the field they're that like, day. They're like doing conspiracies yeah. all of and a sudden. And that's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it disintegrated actually. Yeah. And now I'm like, wondering if we're even if i'm allowed to go to cincinnati anymore i was gonna <laughs> no, i'm just kidding it's crazy oh i wanted to read these emails real yeah. quick before we get further into the sports because we have other sports things but there was cool. an email regarding so last week on the show mm -hmm. this person references that this is hey josh listen to your episode with johnny and you describing your crippling addiction to energy drinks not energy drinks red bull red bull gives it's you not i <laughs> if you go i don't have red bull but i got a monster I'd be like, throw that monster in the trash. I'm not drinking that. It tastes awful. Awful. It's specifically Red Bull. Mm -hmm. But anywho, it says, at one point you told Johnny that you are missing something that he has since he's able to get by without four to eight Red Bulls a day. The thing you are missing is dopamine. Mm. Pretty sure you have ADD. Mm. I do, and I didn't figure it out till I was in my mid-20s. I'm 39 now, and there are days I forget my meds, and they are... Uh, drag ass affair. Anyways, talk to Dr. Drew. Everyone's like, when they think something's wrong with me, they're like, talk to Dr. 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 Drew. <laughs> I'm working on getting Dr. Drew in here, but I don't know that he's going to be able to diagnose me with ADD. What kind of doctor is he? He's a mental health doctor. No, he's a clinical physician. Oh, oh, so that's kind of everything. Yeah, he can do a lot. Of, I mean, he can go into a hospital and like treat people. Today. Okay. He still does actually. Go he does it. He don't, no one even, doesn't even tell people. He's like a workaholic. So when he's not doing this stuff, mm -hmm. which is a lot, he does a lot of this stuff. He's like, I got to go to the hospital and do a round. Oh, so he does practice medicine. Yeah. One oh. time I went to his, he has an office and he was like, meet me at my office for like a checkup. <laughs> okay. And I was just in his office. It was just like a regular office. It was so bizarre. I'm like, doc, this is Dr. Drew's <laughs> Doctors are office. people too. Yeah, it was wild. They're funny. No, he's the best. He's helped me out a great deal. Maybe. But do you think I have ADD? I mean, do, do you know anything about that stuff? I mean, I don't know. You said know. you had ADHD, yeah? I think I have ADHD. My problem is like, I've, I've, I've tried to get diagnosed. I've told my therapist like so many times, I'm like, I think I have this. I have all these <laughs> symptoms. And she's like, oh, that could just be anxiety. Like anxiety mimics the symptoms of ADHD. I'm like, okay, but also can I just get, can I, can we figure it out? Because yeah, it could be anxiety, but what if it is? And I feel it's gotten worse as I've gotten older, especially with like social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time doing anything without also being on my phone. Oh my God. I know. I think that's, I mean, we're, I think that's just everyone though. Kirsten raised her okay. hand. I was just going to say, um, mine was the same thing. Cause I got diagnosed with ADHD at like 23 mm -hmm. and I thought I had like, just like a severe anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And like, I do have some anxiety, yeah. but once the ADHD got treated, I was like, oh, that's what that was. Yeah, I just, I have a really hard time focusing and concentrating and like fully like dedicating myself to anything or like I go so hard with something with no like plans of like how I'm gonna sustain it. Like the Twitch thing, I started streaming on Twitch in September and I streamed like every single day for maybe three months and then I was like, I can't do this anymore. No, I get I it. I, I'm stop. the same way. I, I twitched all during pandemic mm -hmm. because I didn't, I mean, I still had a podcast, but I didn't have the stage. Yeah. So I was missing something. And since I've gone back to the stage, I don't have the desire. Yeah. Like it's almost like a chore and I don't want to, I don't want to go on and act like it's a chore, obviously. So I'm trying to like gussy it all up and make it a little more special for when I do do it. Mm -hmm. That's the plan now. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my therapist says I just have depression. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it also just crippling. And it's also like, she's not like, I go, well, should I be on medication? She goes, no. <laughs> she goes, no. you don't want to be what? on medication. <laughs> and I go, it's not about wants. It's about, needs. I go, yeah, but I, exactly. It's like, and uh, yeah, there is a, there is a weird, there's some things where I go, is this enough? Yeah. 
Is breath work enough? I don't think so. No, <laughs> not always. And therapists are not psychiatrists, and they like to pretend that that's they are. That's true, actually. And some they don't, they're wrong. That's the other that's thing. What, exactly. Sometimes it's like, they're wrong. It's not like there's just a you know society of therapists that are trained the exact same way and all think th- and talk the same way. They're all different, and they can be wrong, and they can yeah. be stupid. And I'm big on Jesus take the wheel. They can be, <laughs> they can be corrupt and they stupid. They can be fucked up in the head. I, I just let Jesus take the wheel mental health wise and yeah. <laughs> i do you just gotta let go you just gotta that's really what life. it is just let go but yeah no i mean depression makes me go like well what's on the old phone today and then i'm <laughs> yeah. just zoosh, zoosh, zoosh. and then you look and you're like well it's six in the morning yeah and i haven't fallen asleep yet so oh. jo- josh i do have an extra w- wrinkle to this what's that so one one reason why they might not even if you're diagnosed with adhd why they might not give you medication if you also have depression is because if you have clinical depression and you get the medication you could uh commit slip and slide oh mm, well that sucks. like Adderall? i mean i could i could any i well maybe i should just well i'm not going to talk about my drug use uh, <laughs> <laughs> i've uh, never taken adderall myself. and i don't want to because i've seen how people are on it and i don't want to be like that i don't They're get tweaking a, i know i don't get a addicted to things because i've tried the gamut <laughs> and so and i've been able to like just go like well that's not for me or i like this but i know that's a little no I like it a little too much all? i'm addicted to nebulous things what i like that? having a good time i don't i'm not addicted to a specific drug mm-hmm. just you know having I mean? fun just like yes the whole broad not being not sober yes <laughs> <laughs> it's a chief keef song you know i it is a chief keef song i do know that it's funny mm-hmm. i i mean but yeah i guess that would be the addiction i mean i just don't like being i mean i can get through a day or two and just be like i can't wait till i don't be sober yeah that's fun <laughs> yeah well maybe if and i like smoking weed i mean it's not like i do too if this world wasn't so fucked then we wouldn't need to be unsober all the time to deal I guess with it that's true it is I know it is because I get so frustrated by all the shit I see and then I get sad because I'm like, this is not going well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't let things bother me anymore. I mean, it's a you're young, so you're still yeah. very like pure hearted in that way where the ills of the world could still affect your uh, everyday life. For once you get no, older. No, 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 no. You're misreading me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not. It's well, not you're that saying the Ills that you're getting the, over it. I mean, I guess like on a, a on a basic level i'm like noticing all the fucked up shit and i'm like wow this sucks but i just live in my own bubble mm. and i actually don't i'm not a political person at all because i just think it's total bullshit and it's like it sounds you know cliche or whatever but i really think it is structurally designed to divide people as sure. opposed to like you grew up bringing them together this is all you saw i mean i had yeah, obama it's... so i was duped for a little while i'm like he's I great and then he's like i'm going to hawaii yeah but you were like a little kid <laughs> yeah he's like, I'm i made going to hawaii. my <laughs> fuck you all I'm i made my dad vote this. for obama yeah, we all did. I mean, that's why he won. <laughs> I was like, Dad, he's going to be the first black president. Like, we yeah. have to. And then my dad regretted it because other all policy our ra- reasons. <laughs> all our racist da- uncles and dads voted for him because they were like, I'll give one a shot. And then they were like, <laughs> they were like no. Never again. <laughs> Donald Trump now. And then yeah. they voted for him. I mean, it's... It's really crazy that we went from Obama to Trump. Like, it's it's couldn't be more Pretty handedly, opposite. too. And they both won pretty handed i mean like trump i guess by a lot little bit of a sli- little bit of a slip there but it was it was a good amount i think we have another uh, email here from josiah yeah this one i don't i just wanted to finish out the emails and then we'll get back to the sports news because mm-hmm. i have some videos i want to play cool and this says i because we talked about lakeland florida last week and when i was there they had two gator attacks oh god and they were like bragging about it they're like that you see that uh, lake over there gator attacks found a couple Ugh bodies in there so this guy goes i was born in lakeland and ended up going back there for college and i can confirm that story that you told but people definitely get snagged dragged and shredded by the gators there i was on my way to work one day and there was an eight to ten foot gator just walking across the lawn of an elementary school as kids were being released and they had to shut everything down until the animal control could move into the area Turns out that was a mama gator and its babies were just walking the front lawn of the school like they went there. Craziest (laughs) part, nobody really looked shocked except the kids. It was normal to have roaming dinosaurs. I've caught baby gators fishing in lakes and ponds there and wouldn't be surprised if I also hooked a leg or a hand from a body. 
All right. That's terrifying. Love the show, and I always <laughs> finish in four strokes, Josiah. Thank you, Josiah. I love that you love the show. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send those things in. Yeah, dinosaurs. I mean, dinosaurs, gators. They really are, though. <laughs> They're freaky. I don't like them. They're dinosaurs, all yeah. right. They're the closest thing we have other than like a Komodo dragon or something. And do those live in America? No. I don't, I don't think so. I They're not, not just walking around like gators. Are. No, not at all. Could oh. you imagine in California? I mean, it's kind of no. like this is how it would be, though. It'd be like you're just like outside and there's just a gator in your backyard. That's your life every day. Why do people live in Florida? Why do people live any? I find myself <laughs> thinking that about most of this country because anywhere that it gets cold in the winter and it snows, I'm just like, what is your problem? Well, I'll tell you this. I love the cold and the snow, but oh I got God. stuck in a generational blizzard during Christmas time. Oh, I remember seeing you <laughs> yeah. post about that. You were like, oh, it's going to be four more days till I can get a flight. So many people got stranded by that Southwest yeah. cancellation shit. And I was just at home kind of like snickering. Mine wasn't South. <laughs> I, I fly United first and foremost. We I talked see. about that last week too, but I'm a United boy. I like and it. Uh, it wasn't, it was because the airport was literally closed uh -huh. for like a week. So that's why I couldn't get a flight. That's it had nothing to do with airline. I could have drove to like Cleveland or something, but then I would have had to drive in a driving ban. There was a whole thing. There was a, there was a literal driving ban for everyone. So I was stuck in a hotel for seven days. Sounds awful. It was, and it also wasn't that awful. It was kind of nice, Just but also not awful. Okay, that's you go like stir spoiled. crazy. I ran out of cigarettes. <laughs> the food wasn't great. Did you have weed? I was running low, but I got some, and then I, I got a little. A little, uh, what are they called? Those um, St. Bernard's came with one of the barrels around their neck <laughs> and brought me a little care package. So that was nice. Not yeah. really. It was just a guy in a pickup truck. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I so I, I get why people, when I was there, I was like, man, I can't believe I grew up here. Like, why do people live right where there a narrow band of intense snow comes, mm. like you said? Yeah. But I can take that over the hurricanes, the gators. Oh, no. Even though that was basically a snow hurricane. I'll take the, the hurricanes for an 80 degrees winter. Were you there when Sandy Hook happened? Or Sandy. not Sandy Hook, what the hell? <laughs> San yes, <laughs> I was in high school. I meant uh, Hurricane Sandy. Yes, yeah. I remember I was in high school. It was the same year, actually, which is kind of <laughs> insane when you think about it. Well, that's Sandy, tough name. <laughs> yeah, it but it really plummeted the uh, popular name list yeah, that year. Yeah, it went straight to the bottom. But um, yeah, Hurricane Sandy, I remember it was nuts. We were driving around the neighborhood like the day it was over and so many trees were like destroyed houses. I don't think anyone died. Maybe like two oh, people, people died. died. Uh, a couple oh. people died, but well, uh, not ignorant. that many. <laughs> no, but it was like from, you know, because the, the Jersey Shore got fucked up and yeah, people's houses got... Yeah, it was got, bad. And I think, and I want to say in my memory, that was like the first hurricane I remember in my lifetime that came up to like New York. And it was bad. Like yeah. usually they downgrade by the time they get there and it's yeah, a tropical, tropical storm. storm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just rain and it rains like every day in New York anyway. So it doesn't right. bother me. And it's a little windier than normal. Yeah. That shit was nuts for sure. Another tragedy I watched a uh, <laughs> documentary about. I was in old Chicopee, Massachusetts, and I thought, well, in Rome, you know, I watched the uh, Boston Bomber documentary. You watched it? Mm -hmm. I just watched it, yes. I remember when that went down, and that wasn't yeah. short. That was maybe, what, 2013? I remember watching them yeah. looking for him on the boat. The manhunt. I was obsessed I with the How manhunt. How long did it last again? It was a couple days. I want to yeah. say a couple, three days or so. But see, I forgot about, like, them killing the other officer and stuff. Like, I forgot oh, about I was that watching. part. I was obsessed with it, because, again, Twitter was relatively new, and I remember there was like I had scanner apps on my phone and I could listen into the municipality mm -hmm. scanner apps and it was obsessed. With, I was obsessed with it. I don't know why I was on the radio, too. So I felt like I was like jur a journalist or some horse. Yeah, that's how people on TikTok are that do true crime. Can you imagine oh if that happened God. nowadays with TikTok? Like oh the yeah. amount of hashtags on TikTok. Well, they would have found him Punk. way quicker. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, seriously. But people really like do delude themselves into thinking like that they are a detective or something. Yes. But then they actually end up doing something and it's kind of awesome. I find it weird and I find it a little more nefarious than any of the occupations we've talked about so far. But trafficking in true crime mm. where you're like monetarily like yeah. salivating over like people's. Yeah. I mean, I make fun of little things here and there. No, I but don't. But I'm not like, you know, making it my like, let's dig deeper into the psyche of this man who murdered 
four cheerleaders or whatever. Yeah, I, <laughs> like, I don't, <laughs> I don't love it, and especially when they're um, because of this ADHD generation, people are forced to like do two things at once. So they're talking about <laughs> someone getting murdered by a serial killer while doing their makeup or eating That's seafood hilarious. or something. You're doing a mukbang. Yeah, this but is it, the world. Um, now why haven't they made like true crime porn yet? Because it's such a like women really <gasps> are just they? like. Uh, <sighs> Murder. Whoa. I thought that was you. No, it was my soundboard. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's what but that's what every time I have a murder story, I'm like, get get the vibrators out, ladies, because <laughs> it is time. But uh I I mean I'm making fun of it, but at the same time there I know so many women who are just like enthralled to the degree where it's like I feel like this could be a genre of pornography. Well, that... are they enthralled with like the the information, like the research, or the, yes. the what if you the, made it research or the killer? Is <laughs> it like a Ted like, Bundy infatuation type thing? What if it's two people researching the case well, and fucking. they fuck? Because you can get kind of like grimy <laughs> if you're making it about the like yeah. mur- like where they're I like, mean, well, that sex was good, <laughs> you know. Thought, what I'm <laughs> I thought of something. Well, there's yeah. free use porn, which you know what that is. Yes. So what if tell it, everyone out there who doesn't okay, know? Okay. Well, free use is a genre of porn where basically the girl usually the girl i guess it could go either way is getting used um freely and not really like acknowledging or doing anything but it's kind of just like i guess the fetish is that you can do whatever you want to the girl See, it doesn't make i don't like i've like i don't i didn't know the word what that meant the genre and then i've seen like a couple of them and I'll click on them, and it's just like, yeah, they're like reading a book, and the guy's just like fucking them, and they're acting like they're not even there. I, and it's like, what's the fun in this? I have no idea. I don't understand the fun. I mean, I guess it's just something different, or maybe it's like similar to what people experience in real life. Like their partner doesn't pay attention to them, so they <laughs> that's funny fetishize that. If only you could get off on something that's so mean like that. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could. Well, that would um, be. I mean, it's she could be researching true crime, but instead yes. of. Um, I mean, she wouldn't be acknowledging like the sex, but would be just randomly like saying facts uh, about the case and like, excited throughout about the them. scene. Yeah, like when A she's coming, revelation. she's like, she's like saying um, important facts. I've the connected case. the dots. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was the uncle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my, I have a question. <laughs> yes, please. It, back to the Boston bomber. Like, what did you think about when they? put him on the cover of Rolling Stone with like oh a kind of a thirst trappy type picture. Joe Karzarniev, I was jealous. I mean, he had, <laughs> being on the cover. He just looked cool and you know every yeah. girl was like, I mean, what a bad boy. Oh god. He I think that's what they were going work. for and it well, just Well, sure. What a so silly move. Backlash. Talk about print articles. I mean, another controversial 2012, 2013 really was such swinging a different for the time. Fences. Such a different Like imagine they did this now. I mean, it's. Crazy. I say that you could say that about anything. I guess from was a Osama ago. bin Laden on a t- Time magazine also for like Man of the Year? Did he get Man? Not of the Man year? of the Year. <laughs> well, Maybe. Well, he's an influential person. I mean, he did nine eleven. Where's my? Boss That's pretty Obama's. influential. Yeah, no, he was. He was in the running. Can we get a verification? There it is. I think it's fair to be in the running. He was in the running for like, I mean, Hitler was because it's not about being a good person for Time Person of the Year. It's just the most influential and talked about, like Donald Trump. I I want to say that's why I want to say Hitler was on it. Yeah, it's yeah. like they have him and Charles Manson well, here. Oh gosh, they really just—they're like man of the—they really got to yeah. change the. How about just like you know, the guy—the guy, the guy we all talked about. Yeah, <laughs> you know, person not, of the year does sound flattering. Yeah, it sounds like it's <laughs> it like, like what a award. achievement. It but the well, reason I I brought up uh, the boss—I mean that's that's crazy. I did forget that they did that, and he was like they didn't really in this documentary. S- talk about him the bomber. or show him that much. Oh, God. They talked about more of the manhunt. Because his brother, by the way, he got out scot-free because his brother got killed in the shootout. Right in away. The, he ran him over. He yeah. ran him over, he yeah. ran him over. And then he, yeah, he did. He ran him over. He ran over his he brother. He might have been dead before then, though. Well, what was their uh, motive again? What was it? Well, they're. I think they just down with the old America. Oh, it was like uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a la Akbar or whatever. Yeah, something in a lot of that effect around those lines. <laughs> okay, yeah, the older brother came over here because he wanted to like box for the U.S. Olympics. And oh. then they had just changed the rules that you couldn't unless you were like a U.S. citizen. Oh, so he was like, fuck and that. And he kind of took that as like, instead of it. Yeah, he took it as them being like, you know, anti-Muslim. I it's guess, a lot of ways. It's a lot of ways that the, you know, uh, Muslim extremists can bend. They're like. 
that's because America, man. Yeah. They tell them everything. Every little problem, the guy's like, I didn't get this job. They're like, they hate Muslims, dude. Yeah. And I feel like him running over his brother, like the way they view it, it's not even a bad thing because they want to die. Like no, the, sure. The terror, like their goal is to die. And I found out. I don't that, think like, their goal is to die because they were trying real hard not to die. Not to die. But <laughs> yeah, and to with, escape. <laughs> what's it called? With 9-11, I found out like the, the people who actually do the terrorist attacks, like it's a huge oh, honor sure. to be the one to actually do the thing yeah, because it's, it's a they get to go to heaven with their virgins or oh, whatever. Yeah. That's why they're so fucking scary because they're like, I'm in a cafe. Yeah, <laughs> no fucks. But there's a new Boston bomber. Yeah. There's a second Boston bomber. Okay. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Now there's a video of this bomber, isn't there? Fans were horrified at footage of a marathon runner pooping in oh. a stranger's <laughs> garden. Oh, Lord. The runner took the risk during the week's Boston Marathon in America, but was unknowingly caught on camera by the homeowner's doorbell cam. Oh, gosh. They got to know. This is hilarious. This is like the most damning footage since the bombing to come out of the Boston Marathon bombing. You know what I'm saying? Or to come out of the Boston Marathon. Over 30,000 people took part in the 26.2 mile run and put their hands on the much coveted finisher's medal. While there was a portable toilets en route, Mm -hmm. one runner simply couldn't wait. Mm -hmm. And he took his chances by detouring into the garden to relieve himself. Now, if he really was, if it really was like chef's kiss, he would have gone into someone's yard and shat in their boat. The people that, keep their boats in their <laughs> front yard. They do. People keep. I mean, that's where Zhokar Zarniev was found sleeping, or like he was like wounded and he was passed out in a boat. He was in someone's just out in the open in the back. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a cover on the boat, so oh, he, was, like, he was under, under the, the cover, cover, and they found like a blood. Why, he stayed the, in Boston. Uh, they tried to get out. They were going to go drive Fucking to New idiots, York. idiots, I swear. I don't know why they stayed so long, but they did. Yeah, he got... So this man, it would have been just real... Let's see it. ...perfect if he just shat on into a boat. That would have been amazing. That's it? Where is he? Oh, there, oh, he, there is. he is. That's someone's yard? It's so big. <laughs> it's so <laughs> opulent. Bro. I mean, he's... What part of Massachusetts? That looks like a church. Involved? Why would you pick the wide open... <laughs> beautiful oh it's oh it's that so someone was there someone saw he's over in the corner he's in the corner and then yeah someone comes over oh god why if you're in the i (laughs) guess yeah you got to think about the door if there's a door there though i wouldn't shit right there no but genuine (laughs) question what are you supposed to do like shit your pants well, I think some what are people you during the marathons, like, they do piss themselves. Pissing is different than yeah. shitting. I mean, <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> that's a lot. Well, yeah, what do. are to, you How can to you, do? you're not going to get a good time if you're concerned with shit running down your leg. But also, he's not going to get, he's, well, he's, he's d- taking yeah. a shit in the yard. Yet. I mean, well, he's off the route. shit on his yeah. hand, though, too, because he did a little movement. But, and okay, he was very ugh. stiff let's with say, it. Let's say you're only, like, five miles into the 26-mile <laughs> run, and you yeah. need to, you're you going to have diarrhea or something. Is it better to shit your pants and then run 21 more miles with <laughs> shit in your pants? No. Or take a five-minute detour to shit on someone's lawn and then finish with no shit in your well, pants? Well, I think there's option three. In that I could have, if I'm going to be in that yard, I would go up to the door and at least knock and be like, listen, I'm running the marathon. And boy, oh boy, it's either that or I'm going to shit on your fucking front porch right now. (laughs) So what do you say? And then, of course, the person could kick them out. And that's when you shit on their lawn. Yeah, as an FU. Yeah, exactly. I guess that makes sense. They also said there's like porta potties around and about. Yeah, but how often are they? Because if you have to go at mile five and the porta potties at mile seven... It doesn't seem like a lot because it's 26 miles. Sure. But like two miles is so... I can't run two miles. Of course. No, I get what you're saying. Now, as a person who's had to prep for anal scenes... Yes. (laughs) Do you think that this man should have prepared for his marathon a little bit better? And Hmm. it's crazy that he's running and having to shit knowing he's doing a marathon. Yeah. I mean, I definitely wonder what he ate the night before. Yeah, or the morning of. Yeah. Usually it's like... Well... Honestly, it's not a bad idea for marathon runners to do like an enema the morning of and then, you know, eat your usual stuff, a granola bar, but it's not going to travel through your body fast enough to affect you unless it's like, you know, a burrito or hot sauce or something. I don't know, but keep it clean. Yeah, exactly. Again, it's like a preparation thing. Maybe he's just like a random guy who's doing it as a hobby. Now, this woman, did you show a woman who pooped herself (laughs) and broke a record? 
at the same yeah, time. That's hey, what it said. There that's was the a, thing. Like, how much do you want to win? <laughs> Except there was a UFC fight where a girl shit herself. What? And it, you could see it like start. Was it because of a punch? No, I don't know what it was. They were on the ground wrestling. You should, you should a, win if you punch someone so hard they shit they automatically. Should, I mean, yeah, that's kind of wild. Like, I just don't know how you shit yourself unless you're literally getting fucked in the ass. I then I get it. I mean, I, I know how you could get it from other, like you know, digestive reasons, perhaps. But, yeah, uh, but I mean, if you okay, you're a, a professional competitive athlete. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you're a fighter and you fight, you know, twice yeah. a year or something, and you've been training for your fight for months and months and months, and now it's the day of your fight, the moment of your fight. You did your walk in. You did everything. What is in your stomach that would be gurgling around? So, like, I get nerves, but you should be pretty empty. True. Like, it shouldn't be such a concern that you're going to expel something of in, in the octagon. Yeah, that's crazy. In the octagon. I know football players And they can't clean pants. it. I mean, they have to clean it, but, like, they're not supposed to, like, put water because it could affect of the, oh my God, the rest crazy. of the fight. That's hilarious. What, do do? what did they do? I think they probably cleaned it. We got it. We got to. That's really embarrassing. If you know any uh, other UFC events where people yeah. shit their pants, please yeah. let us know. We, I want to get. I'm going to do some research. If you just Google um, UFC like, girl fighter shits herself, Justine it'll Kish. come up. That's her name, Justine Kish. That's, yes, that must suck to like work so hard and then that's all you're known for is shitting yourself. Well, hopefully she can win a belt and we can get this <laughs> yeah. uh, story she's out not, of the she's top not of the winning, Google search. She's not winning a belt. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. You shit yourself in the ring. You're not winning a belt. <laughs> Football players, offensive linemen specifically, shit themselves all the time, and it's almost like a badge of honor. I feel like you can't even tell though, because they have so much clothes on. Well, not when they it see the thing is nice and tight. They wear all whites. <laughs> yeah. That's when you oh, can tell. You see a little stain. Yeah, that comes through. You see a lot of stain. I mean, oh all whites, God. and then they're bending over the offensive linemen, especially. Also, like I feel like that's low key an advantage for an athlete the one that shits themselves has the advantage because that's disgusting and people don't want to like go near you. No, of course. And they're going to be off their game because it stinks. But the quarterback has to get under that center's ass. Right, exactly. And that so. poor guy, he's like, we're on the same team here, bud. And you're <laughs> fucking me up. Oh, speaking of long snappers. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm sure you don't give a shit. Have you heard about these uh, check marks are going away? I never had a check mark. Yeah. I never wanted one. I thought they were for dorks. I never had one. I wanted one, not for the vanity, but because I have a lot of uh Well, yeah, you have to deal with all of the time, I sent you way. a video or a, yeah. a screenshot of all the fakes. And I, so I got it for Twitter. Because also, like, I'm not going to lie, like, I thought it was a little cool when when everyone sure. still had it all the celebrities still had it i was like oh i'm low-key like because i have a big following so i was like i deserve it like not to be you know annoying but now that everyone especially because people are making fake <laughs> yeah they make the fake like duping so people for, as you just for practical purposes yeah. but now that they took it away it's like cool to not have one and i kind of want to get rid of it now i'm like over <laughs> i've always been an unverified bad boy yeah. what's up but uh all the celebrities very upset about their check marks being yeah. taken away by Elon Musk. And I don't really know why the timing of it happened the way it is. I didn't know that they were going to do picked, that. Because he's a troll. He's like well, he blew on up 420. His, he blew up his rocket them. too. His rocket yeah. blew up. So he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take all your check marks. Okay. And not, okay. But not to defend Elon. I'm not like an Elon supporter. You can defend him. I have no, I'm no I don't. Towards him. I don't like the man. Oh, okay. I don't dislike him. But um, apparently the rocket thing, like it was okay that it blew up. Like it wasn't like a fail. <laughs> that's what I say It was just too. collecting data. That's what the people say. So well, yeah, that's a, it's all an experiment. Uh, you know, you got to fail. It's to, always You got to crack a few eggs, you know, yeah. whatever the case may be. But one celebrity was very upset yes. about their Twitter checkmark being taken away. And that is 49ers long snapper. Hmm. I don't even know his fucking name. What's his name? Tabor Pepper? Hmm. Tabor That's Pepper. That's his name? Yeah, well, hell of a name. Sounds like a food. In terms <laughs> of... <laughs> Tabor? That's how you spell it? Sounds, it? Yeah. That's weird. Now, in terms of like the hierarchy of a football team, this guy's lower than kicker. He's a long snapper. He's not even like a Wait, regular center. That's a position like yeah. on a team. I've it's never heard for, of long snapper. So, you know, when they're doing a punt or they're doing a field goal and they have to snap the ball a long distance, mm -hmm. there's one player who can also maybe play some offensive line who specializes in the long snap. And some of these guys are so proficient at it that they can like snap a ball 
like 10 yards into a mailbox or something like that. But That's how isn't that what the kicker does? Like they kick when it's like a field goal or right, something? Right, but they have I to don't s- know football at all. They have to snap the ball <laughs> to the person that puts the ball down for the kicker. You see? So like they snap it and then the, there's a holder and he catches so it. So all they do is throw it to the, the – it's not even part of the game? Block. It's part of the game. It's the start. It's to hike the ball, you know? Okay. Like I, I, I know <laughs> Yeah. Show us that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, who am I to judge? He's on a professional football team and he <laughs> probably has a lot of money. I don't know about a lot, but he's got a good amount, you okay. know? He's, and, yeah. Uh, evidently, he doesn't have enough to, to want to pay for $8 a month to get yeah. his check mark here, evidently, yeah. because he is up in arms. 49ers long snapper Tabor Pepper lashed out at Elon Musk after he lost his verification, throwing vulgar insults in the direction mm. of the SpaceX founder. That little bitch at Elon Musk finally did it. He took away my check mark. Mm. I'm never going to pay for this shit platform, BTW. Okay. Hashtag beluga whale looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dead. The, <laughs> the 28-year-old has since made his Twitter private. He's yeah. getting a lot of flack. <laughs> Musk recently unveiled a plan to eliminate verification for celebrities, journalism, and athletes, and offer the blue check mark to those who pay eight dollars a month for Twitter Blue. It is funny when I get followed by a check mark. You're usually you're like, oh boy, a yeah. check mark, and now you look and it's like MAGA. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> the culture has changed <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. And it's it's like totally different. Twelve now. followers, you're like, oh, I guess it's like yeah. not a celebrity. I it's, thought it was someone cool. It's funny because like you. You would think that people that are like a public figure and famous would like kind of be nonchalant about it, especially if it's been a while. But yes. then they take it away and you really see like how triggered people are at not feeling above the majority of people. Yeah, it is funny. Like, it's like being like unidentifiable as a public figure is like very upsetting to a lot of people. Most who reason. had it happen and our big celebrities didn't give a shit. But Halle then, Berry is not going to give a shit. She has right. millions and millions. Like everyone knows. But who some she writer is. for like the New Yorker or something like yeah. that who like does no one really knows who they are. They're like, what the fuck? I'm special. Yeah, <laughs> How well, dare you? not even the New York, the New Yorker. I mean, I, I know, couldn't I even understand anything, yeah. it because that's kind of like you know a reputable. But like it, it always used to bother me a little bit before Elon took over and any of this shit when like. It, a journalist from like the Kansas City Tribune yeah, 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 yeah. With, that has 700 followers. 700 followers and like writes about the local uh, picnic <laughs> yeah, yeah. is verified. And I'm like, I have 600,000 supporters <laughs> yeah, on Twitter yeah, yeah. and I'm a, I've, you know, I'm not like, a, I'm a secret star, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I have enough of a following that I think a verification's want, warranted. But at this point, who cares? No, it is funny. It's not like though, that yeah. anymore. <laughs> I cover a uh, high school basketball for the right. Kansas City Tribune. We I need to know that you're who you say you are god forbid they put any fake reports out there and name of uh you know methodist high school yeah exactly let's get to a couple news topics before we wrap up here so we can it's been blowing flying by hell yeah i love that (laughs) so this one's wild I don't know if you heard about this because it involves OnlyFans, and it came to me by way of T-Bone. Mm. This Italian OnlyFans model had a bit of an oopsie. She shit herself? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been mild by comparison. <laughs> this kind of circles things back to our first story a little bit. We've seen plenty of weird OnlyFans stories over the years. Now, this is stri- this is like title? European, by the way. Mm-hmm. Because she's Italian, yeah. right? So I th- take that into... I don't know. Do we take that into consideration? I'll tell you what happened here. It Italian depends. OnlyFans star Michelle Comey gave her followers the opportunity of a lifetime to be in a video with her for content. So it's almost like, hey, stunt dick Yeah, fan. it's not new. It's a yeah. common, common grift. But the viewer she ended up picking was actually underage. Oh, uh, you fucking... According to the model, after several selections, she ended up choosing the fan and met with him to record the video, but only after doing so, discovered the truth about his age. In a TikTok video translated by the Irish Mirror, Comey explained that she hadn't had her fan sign the paperwork until after the video was filmed and didn't realize he hadn't turned 18 yet. Oh, what a, what a silly birth. little mistake. He skipped the birth of his year, 2005, for obvious reasons. So 2005, they would make him... 17 i guess he's just like a slightly under 
Uh, By 16, yeah. It's just oh. so avoidable. So avoidable. <laughs> like, I did the paperwork on. afterwards. I wonder, like, how... Just check the ID. You don't, you don't have to sign anything, but check the fucking ID. Like, for fuck's sake, that's the first thing you do when filming. And that's why it does irritate me when these stupid little OnlyFans <laughs> creators... No offense. Michelle. But uh, Michelle... It's not that fucking difficult to check someone's ID. My question was, with them. is that a thing in Italy, though? Like, is it? Is I, she just I, getting flack? No. Because, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think it's, no. We're, we're all one industry, even <laughs> yeah, though, yeah, yeah. you know, there's technically, in mainstream, there's the European. I thought you were going to say we're all one society. Well, we are. <laughs> we are, yeah, yeah. We are a society, and we need to check IDs before we have sex with people, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> people do lie about their age, and it's important to protect protect yourself and not make a uh, child porn the model went on to take responsibility <laughs> claiming the whole situation was her fault and she should have made him sign everything a lot sooner no shit i'm looking for a partner again now the boy got <laughs> smart but i hope he at least enjoyed himself she added since the controversy she hasn't stayed out of the news for long just recently she and a fellow creator were spotted spotted uh, filming a video together in a grocery store Oh my god! This is just a, a, the type of person is just trash. Now, if this She's person could this person get the platform in trouble? Yes. Well, whether yes in trouble, OnlyFans can get in trouble because there's a lot of anti-porn crusaders that um, look for like news stories like this to back up their points that porn is like inherently horrible and damaging and bad for affecting the children or whatever yeah but also like it just makes us look like the shit. christians the christians she's talking <laughs> yes the christians but the also Christian it just right. <laughs> in general people see shit like this and they think all creators are just birds and right. like not all of us are fucking brain dead like this and would do something so just stupid birds that's so funny <laughs> like she's literally you know what i was like i've never heard that to describe someone as dumb and i love it they're Birds. That's a thing that people <laughs> online will call stupid girls birds. And I didn't know that. Yes, and I realized why because yesterday I was practicing driving and <laughs> there was some birds in the road and they like didn't move till the last second and I was like, God, those birds are dumb as shit. And I always I'm, thought it was oh. like a black guy thing where they call girls birds like as like it's a, become more of like a twitter now this is like, an like I, I say thing. like you know if there's a, a, a dumb lady I'd be like that lady's a little daffy. Daffy, I've never heard, like Daffy Duck. But that's like old school, yeah. Is Daffy Duck dumb? A little bit. He is a little bit of an oaf. He just right? has a speech impediment, yeah. right? Or is that Donald? Well, that's they both Donald. do. They both do. They, they both, both do. do. Yeah. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Why are they making the ducks? What are they saying? All ducks can't talk. Yeah. They don't have lips. They don't. They have, have lips. bills. Do they have tongues? Yeah. Yes. Because I know. I mean, Donald, Donald definitely has a fucking thing. So does Daffy. They <laughs> what see does it. that mean? <laughs> well, you see that thing spitting and flapping oh, yeah. around all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait. <laughs> well, in this story, this one involves uh, a bit of a, well, at least an attempted murder. Mm. I lost my button. I always lose that one. God. Oh, oh murder. Mm. <laughs> I had to add my little. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can get more. We should get more. I'll do it. Yeah, we can get you to uh, do one. Oh, do it. Yeah, do it right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, murder. Brand new. Been looking to get new rid of that button. Bite. Yeah, I've been, <laughs> been looking to change that one out. Hell anyway, yeah, I'm honored. Many years. This woman tried to kill her doppelganger. Now you said you have many. You know, I'm not saying you're gonna ever try to kill any of them, but no. you have a lot of like fake accounts yes, out there. Yes, they're not my doppelganger. They're just a fucking stalker. Is there ever a, a woman who you think is a fake account, but then you're like, well, she just kind of looks no. like me. <laughs> that would No, I would actually love that because yeah. then I would make porn with that person. Hey, if, if you're out there. It, as long as they're not underage. If you're out there and you are above age. Yeah, no one looks like me. I've I've like asked and people never say, oh, hmm. this person, once in a while, I've seen maybe someone, but like no one of note. Hmm. I'd like to have a doppelganger. I get tagged in all kinds of dumb fucking shit where I'm like, <laughs> you think that guy looks like me? I'm going to go slip and slide myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I hate it. I actually hate when people do. I mean, they did it. To, they, it's like an ongoing thing. They, they think it's, it's a, flattering. And they're so like, is this? No, they don't think it's flattering. They're like, <laughs> look at they this don't freak. think it's flattering. They're just like, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> it's never fun. But this uh, woman evidently got very up in arms about it. A Russian woman living in New York City was sentenced to 21 years in jail for poisoning her similar-looking friend with a sedative-laced cheesecake. 
then stealing her identification under other valuables. Okay, so she wasn't mad that she looked like her. She was trying to steal the money. Steal. I, well, what was the goal? Like, what was supposed to happen? Well, maybe she, this woman has a better life than her. And she was like, well, we look the same, so I'm going to just fucking kill her and no assume one would her notice. identity. That sounds like a movie, yeah. <laughs> no one would ever notice. A jury convicted Victoria Nazarov, Nazarova, excuse me, 47, of attempted murder, assault, and other charges in February. Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz announced on television. <gasps> Melinda Katz, I know her. Do you know her? I know her personally. Wow. Have yeah. you used her services? What does that mean? I mean, she's the DA. <laughs> oh, no, she wasn't the D. She was the congressperson when I oh, was wow. in Queens. Yeah. In Queens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Well, shout out Melinda Katz. A ruthless and calculating con artist is going for, uh, to prison for a long time for trying to murder her way to personal profit and gain, Katz said in a statement. Thankfully, the victim survived the attack on her life and we were able to deliver justice to her. I want to know she, how she, what she looked like. How did her. she survive if it was like a poison cheesecake i wonder because i just you know this is so weird i was just in bakersfield and i performed and a man had just a, a bit of crowd work that uh happened he was saying that his wife was like doing the old dateline antifreeze situation what what is that where your spouse is like slipping in antifreeze into your food oh antifreeze oh i see so he was getting poisoned by his wife that's psycho and uh, he found out about it because he was getting sick. I've been sick for so long. That's usually what happens. They're like, I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. And then they go to the doctor and they're like, you're being poisoned. Yep. Don't get close to anyone ever. Yeah, they do like a talk screen or something like that. The New York Post reports that the judge delivering uh, the sentence called her an extremely dangerous woman with a diabolical scheme, blah, dee bop I want to see what she got poisoned with. The defense believes that Judge Holder's sentence was excessive and inappropriate. Oh, well, that's funny. I want to find out the details. Mm. Where are they? Here they are. Both had dark hair, the same complexion, and other similar uh, similar physical traits. It said additionally they were both Russian speakers. Ooh, oh, so that's gonna like throw everyone off. I speak Russian too, so it's okay. You do? No, 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 no. I was saying this woman. She's just <laughs> oh. like, no, I speak Russian, just like the last broad. Right. Uh, she was violently vomiting, floating mm. in and out of consciousness, and terrified there was something seriously wrong with her. According to the district attorney. Well, there was. So that's how they figured it out. Yeah, you, you're being poisoned. <laughs> well, there was. There was. <laughs> you're violently vomiting. <laughs> she laced a slice of cheesecake with a deadly drug so she could steal her unsuspecting victim's most valuable possession, her identity. That's them? Oh, that's them there. I guess they, I mean. The, the one on the right just needs some cheek filler and then they're identical and she, reduce her lips. <laughs> you're like I, you're like I can I, I can, can make pinpoint her pinpoint the difference. I can make her look more identical. Yeah, but do you think at a passing glance they'd notice? I would notice. I mean, I'd notice. Also, it's like it the eyebrows like the, are completely different. The woman on the left, I feel like she had something. Which one is the one that got poisoned? Yeah, I can't tell which one's which. The one on the right looks like the poisoner. She I'm looks gonna, sinister. Yes, I'm gonna guess the one on the right was trying to assume the one on the left's mm -hmm. identity. Does it yeah. say? Probably not. Uh, the one on the left is the one who is wanted for murder oh wow a wow. twist she's trying to look innocent with that like snow white Say rosy this cheeks vibe is this woman married because if i if he if he was he's like whoa honey up oh, i don't know what you did <laughs> you look great wow and where did you learn how to do that with your mouth good god <laughs> oh my god i'm not asking any questions <laughs> yeah just look the other way Huh, I would have never known. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, it doesn't say that she's married or anything else like that. Private investigator uh, s told CBS News that once in New York, uh, this woman began working as an escort or dominatrix mm. who would sedate her clients and then rob them of their jewelry and other possessions. Cardi B. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> I guess it's more sinister sounding when it's a Russian woman for some reason. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're like, what like, is this, James Bond? This is some mafia shit. One of the uh, one of them, one of the victims of her in the past, actually testified in the trial that she drugged uh, him during a date. After of which he woke up with twenty six hundred dollars in unknown charges on his credit card and a missing <sighs> watch. Wow! She was arrested back in twenty seventeen on charges including attempted murder and grand larceny. How did she get out already? I don't know. 
That's so crazy. You hear about some hot like, women. Hot women, yeah. She, Privilege. That's that's funny. I I wonder, I wonder if that's the case. She's too hot to be a murderer. Yeah, Don't I put mean, her in there. Low key, I think females who commit crimes do get a lot more sympathy than than men, especially attractive women, because. Um, I don't know. Well, that woman who the only Look fans model, Anthony. she won't even get in trouble. I bet because it is like if it was a dude, yeah, that would be like, yeah, go to jail. Yeah, Look, exactly. Casey Anthony killed her baby and did not go to prison. Oh, she's yeah. an attractive woman. Look, a picture of Casey Anthony just went viral on Twitter like yesterday because she was because she looked she good. was at Disney World and people were like freaking out because she went to Disney and people are like, okay, I'll say it. She got the fatty. <laughs> oh, she's got a fatty. Apparently, yeah. Look Pull up like up. Casey Anthony see. Disney World. Pictures. She's terrifying. I think. I wonder. I I always wondered. She did it. What it would be like to sleep with her, like post everything you know like say i just ran into casey anthony in a bar and we like hit it off or something you know what i mean like would i enjoy it i think i don't know I or would honestly, i be terrified of her i, I just, think like, there's something very unsettling about her because she got away with murder and she still acts like she's the victim well may i say this she has the crazy eyes yeah and so sometimes i'll say that and i've worked on myself but sometimes the crazy eyes are like electricity inside of me and I, <laughs> and I find them attracted to me too and i'm like this yeah. is wild and it's always like tumultuous and crazy yeah. so it is there is something like hot about it but it's not long lasting there's also some like fight or flight going on yeah you're, you're not the only one i've it's had a yeah phenom th- definitely i don't know that i could even get myself i would want to but i couldn't even like maybe my body would react in a way where i wouldn't be able to have sex with her because i would be freaked yeah. out yeah i mean it's kind of an elephant in the room that you wouldn't be able to really shake, in my yeah. opinion. But what if, like, right as you come, she's like, I did, I did it. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, OJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Like, how OJ wrote a book. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. did it, but he made the if. Well, I found out that wasn't even his decision. The publishing company oh, yeah, no. purposely to, to fuck with him. He was like, no, I did it. Oh, he, yeah. he, he, it's me, OJ. Yeah. I had one last story. Here. Yes. Where was it? I just put it down. Oh, here it is. This involves a little game. This is intense. This is weird. I don't know why I picked this one. This is another one from T-Bone. But a middle school in U.S. Washington has come under fire after it hosted a bizarre competition between Mm. students and teachers. Gosh. It's always something. Videos have emerged on social media websites showing students and their teachers licking marshmallow cream off the opposite sides of a clear glass plane. Why even? Why? Who thought of this? Who, yeah, that person, the person that created and designed the game. Like, what is the jail? No, but w- disregarding even that it's students and teachers. Like, what is what is the game? Does anyone know what the game is? It's like, called the, the old point? licking game. Evidently, the gross the game took licking. place during an assembly. I don't know. Like, I want to see if this was like was this big? Someone's like, there no, I got it a, from Double Dare. There has to be a purpose to it. Like, like they're not just doing it for no reason. What team well, it's building like, is this? It is. It's like yeah. field day bullshit. But I know. But I want to know. Like, what is the actual? Like, what's the objective of this licking game? Like, well, to get the to get the marshmallow it? cream off. Before oh, they're trying to lick. It's a race. That's very perverted. Who exactly. thought of that? And to make it a white substance at that, and then it's just oh, like, I didn't even think about the white. And the fact You're that more they're, perverted than their me. tongue, of course, I <laughs> the tongues are like you have to like do it facing each other with the clear glass. It, the fact that yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Like, like, this guy's like making eye contact with the kid, like he's <laughs> looking, well, he's way licking it like it's slow. a pussy. Yeah, like, which he's yeah. like exactly. <laughs> he's really getting into everyone it. Everyone else <laughs> took it like a competition, <laughs> and he it. took it like a chance to show you what he can actually yeah, do. Yeah, there's different types of licking. Like there's licking. like like you know how a dog laps up water <laughs> like and then one? there's like sensual licking like that guy put his whole body into every lick yeah, like, he hey was, jeff like, you're not supposed thrusting. to put your dick on it <laughs> oh my god i mean this is sometimes i just don't understand like maybe this is like a small town or something where they <laughs> usually get away with this type of shit but I, mean, <laughs> I, I went to a new york city public school and we never did anything like this i couldn't ever. believe they allowed us to do trust falls you know what i'm saying yeah. and horse shit like that like play dodgeball i mean they were <laughs> this is this bizarre is that person's like oh you're getting it good you're gonna beat me that's him yeah he's putting his whole like <laughs> he's arching into he's it he's like rotating back like he's like going <laughs> left and right too. oh he's you don't like, want to meet angles you- you don't want to go too yeah. slow. And you can tell he's probably like the janitor or something. Oh, God. Like, God damn it. Janitor Bruce is back. He's that teacher something. that always rubs your shoulders a little too long. <laughs> exactly. I got to know. Well, <laughs> it, it's clear that he's the guy that designed it, too. He's like. Yeah, it's his idea. He came up with it. He's like, now you look. And he's like, oh, you're going to go faster than me? Yeah. Oh, all right. 
<laughs> yeah, lick it faster. Oh my god! Wait, so what happened? Did they they got in trouble? <laughs> well, they got in trouble. The video showed students <laughs> shouting and cheering as students and teachers in pairs took turns running to the glass and giving it a lick. I don't know. I mean, those children are in middle school. I would have been like, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I, I, I I'm think licking glass. Even just the idea of like licking glass is silly. Well, even me. in middle school, I I like. You know, I had already been watching the gangbangs and stuff, so I, I would be like, "This is weird. It's it's a gateway, it's honestly, a gateway? To, that, to that type of sexual shit. It shouldn't be done with kids." Students in the crowd can be heard screaming, "Ew, disgusting!" Right? So exactly. Gross. Thank you. <laughs> and what the heck? Yeah, what the heck? That would be me. <laughs> Notably, the game was proposed as a part of a pep rally and fundraiser. However. Users were left appalled after watching the video and criticized the school for hosting a highly inappropriate and sexualized competition. Many parents also emailed the school officials to demand an explanation. A user said, it's mind boggling to watch this video and wonder how not one adult right. questioned whether this was a kind of appropriate teacher student behavior they wanted to exemplify through a fun game. And it's on video. It's, it's not like they video. just did it to do it. They recorded yeah. it. Well, that's someone today. like built Who's this recording little screen. It? Like someone built this that's little plexiglass yeah. box and just because they're like, came what up with the idea. we can lick these middle schoolers, but yep. not really. This, that reminds me. <laughs> and make sure you film it. <laughs> yeah. When I, was, uh, when I was a kid, I was like 14. I went to summer camp, Jewish summer camp and all the girls would be in you know one bunk and one of my best friends you know around that age you start to get like hormones you're sure. feeling things so me and my friend were like let's like grind and like make out but with like a poster in, in between, between. that's so we're hilarious out with the poster but then it ripped because it was just like a thin piece of paper sure. so you know but yeah. that's kind of like this except it's a glass instead of a paper <laughs> they can't rip the, i mean that guy's like, trying to rip doesn't through that count technically that guy's trying to melt the glass with his tongue with all his might all his might he's that's licking it ugh, unreal that's so gross that's <laughs> yeah that's i mean that that's a funny yeah no that's a great comparison i just can't get over like the arching yeah. into it it's so intense i'm glad we don't have boom mics over there because i don't want to hear if that guy's like moaning i want to oh, hear I'm sure he is. <laughs> that would just add to the hilarity of it in a statement into newsweek let's hear what the school district has to say about it the activity that occurred is not approved or endorsed <laughs> by the district after conducting a thorough investigation into how and why this activity took place, it is clear that the intent of the activity was innocent and not ill-intended. I mean, what gave... I don't see anything innocent, innocent about it. However, the fact that the activity was planned, occurred, and not stopped shows a lack of sound discernment and good judgment and is not aligned with the district's expectations and policy. The district is taking corrective actions to address this incident. I want to know on any level what someone could ignorantly and innocently think that that gameplay. was yeah exactly w what i don't get is look even if you come up with this idea and you don't think there's anything morally wrong with it you have to know that people are gonna look at this and the the, the society that we live in that gets <laughs> yeah. offended by fucking uh gum on the sidewalk <laughs> is obviously going to have a problem with this and people are recording for tiktok on their phones like why would you not think this was gonna get backlash drag queens can't even have brunch anymore they can't. And uh, you're licking windows with uh, <laughs> with, with uh, wh white substances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, let's clear off the white from the window. Oh my lord, it I is wild. Someone really like they they must have like a teacher who's so like Mr. Flanders, and he <laughs> made the game. Yeah. Like that so innocent like, that yes, they're like, exactly. well, what's wrong with it? They're like, oh, th uh, Jeff made that game, Jeff. He doesn't have a sexual bone in his body. <laughs> the crazy part is that if it was like just kids doing it and it wasn't the face to face <laughs> yeah, shit, if yeah. it was like just It'd lined up, weird. it would still be weird, but it would be way less weird if they weren't touching tongues. Right. Like you could get simulating away with that. touching tongues. Like you could argue that it's just, you know, a a different kind of licking game. Why not make the game <laughs> side by side in a race that way right, as opposed to face to face? Right. So it's like on display. There's yeah. just so many better ways to, to do this idea. It is a real. Uh, I get pissed cringy. off when they involve kids because I'm like, kids shouldn't be subjected to that kind of, of stuff. They need not. to figure it out on their own and get exposed to that <laughs> on their own, not at yeah. school. Get a poster and, and teachers. Get with your friend on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, you know, go, that's a natural. Go one. do some Googling. Google. At home on your parents' computer, 
it, I wonder at school how kids, should be a break. I wonder that. how they find that stuff nowadays because parents all have they the go blockers. www.pornhub.com. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it, if there's blockers, I don't know how. Do people I mean, really do blockers? I feel like people just accept that, like, it's kind of a rite of passage. Like, not sure. This is what I don't market. That's why I don't like TikTok because it's like I'm out here shaking my shit. I know kids at some point are gonna see that and then go find my shit i don't want that i want to be separated from them so i don't want to put it in places where it's like gonna be so blatant for them sure of course and that's what tiktok <coughs> is i'm glad yeah. that you don't do that yeah it's well not jane it. it's been wonderful we've gone a very long time actually this has been so fun i'm about to have a long. coughing fit Hold on. oh no <coughs> excuse me do you need a drink yeah, I have my drink. Oh, cool. It's good that we're ending because <laughs> yeah, I have to cough. We've been talking so much. Well, tell everyone where where you want them to find you. Um, You can find me on my Twitter, which is verified now. Ooh. Jane Wild, um, triple X. My Instagram account is wildsexual underscore or Jane being wild. Those are both of my accounts. And uh, yeah, everything else. You'll, you'll find it if you really want to. I'm not going to be like, my only man. <laughs> yeah, you can If you want that out. shit, you can find it yourself. And I, you know, I go from uh, making just customs for folks to Hustler Magazine. Hell yeah. What a world, huh? The roaches are everywhere. Yeah. I love you, folks. Thank you for joining us. And do please buy tickets to come see me in Phoenix slash Chandler, that area. Uh, May 5th and 6th, it's happening at the Mic Drop Comedy Club at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram at J underscore Potter on Twitter. That's where you can find the tickets. Beyond that, uh, going to be with Annie and Raleigh, as we mentioned earlier, and then Poughkeepsie June 1st and Saratoga Springs, New York, June 2nd and 3rd. Those are all on sale right now. So please do be buying them. And we will see you next Wednesday right here on the Josh Potter Show. Hell yeah. <laughs>